Now let us look at the sexual reproduction in plants. So plants are different types, flowering plants, non-flowering plants. Non-flowering plants like ferns, they produce spores, we have learnt in the previous session. The flowering plants, there are around some 2,75,000 of species of flowering plants. There is a huge variety. The sizes of these flowering plants greatly varies right from a small plant which is in the size of a rice grain. Rice grain, very small plant. And to a very giant tree, very big tree, salt trees, salt tree or a huge cactus in Sahara desert and a small orchid that is hanging on the branch of a tree in a rainforest. All these are flowering plants. But, this, but there is a great diversity, large variety of flowering plants. Certain flowering plants are creepers or runners on the ground. Certain flowering plants are very huge trees. Some are water floating, some are very small in size. So this much of variety of flowering plants are found. Now let us understand the mechanism of reproduction, how the young ones, here the seeds, how they are produced. So here in sexual reproduction, production of the seed is one important aspect, production or formation of seeds. Most of the seeds are enclosed in the ovary, fruit. A fruit bears seeds. We know the flower after fertilization turns to a fruit. So the fruit, it contain the seeds. The seeds, they contain the baby plant called as embryo and the seed becomes into a new plant after germination. So when the seeds are sown in soil and provided the necessary conditions like water, air and other conditions, then the germination takes place and from there the young sapling or the plant comes out of it. So this is the process of sexual reproduction and growth of new plants in flowering plants. Now let us look at the various reproductive parts of flowering plants. That is that flower various reproductive organs of a plant which are there in the flower. So flower is a reproductive part which consists of male and female reproductive organs. So flower is the reproductive part of a plant which consists of male and female reproductive organs. Certain flowers contain both male and female reproductive parts such flowers are called as bisexual flowers. Bisexual. So that contains both the reproductive organs, male and female. Here the picture, the diagram I have drawn is of a plant called as datura, which is bisexual. So example, datura. Here it has got male and female reproductive parts. The plants or the flowers that have either male or female reproductive or organs are called as unisexual. Flowers, example bottle gourd and papaya. So these are the examples. Now let us see the reproductive organs. The male reproductive organs are called as stamens and all the stamens of a flower constitute the andricium. Andricium is the male reproductive parts of a flower and this is the gynecium. This is the gynecium or corpel, it is called as the female reproductive part. So now the andricium, it consists of a anther and filament. This is a stamen which is comprised of anther. and filament the anther it consists of pollen sacs the pollen sac it consists of pollen grains so the pollen grains they contain the reproductive cells so those are, those are the considered as a male gamete each pollen grain it consists of two sperm cells which will fertilize the egg cell in the female reproductive part so Pollen grains are the reproductive, male reproductive parts or gametes here that are produced in the anther part of the flower. So whereas if you look at the female part, it is a vase-like structure, looks like a flower vase. At the bottom it has got ovary, this part is called as ovary 
and ovary consists of ovules inside the ovary ovules are present so this is the ovary here it has got uh, certain cells ovule has got certain cells which are unfertilized so it has got a stem called as a style this is a long tube called as style and at the top it has got a stage like part which is sticky in which sugar like substances are produced this is called as stigma so we'll learn later what is the importance of the stickiness of the stigma and why certain sugary substances are produced there so these are the male and female reproductive parts of the flower so here we have uh, different flowers this is uh, a male flower male flower and this is a female which has got only the female reproductive part male flower has got only the male reproductive parts so we know that for fertilization the male and female gametes are to be fused so when the pollen grains or the male gametes of a flower fertilizes the ovule of another flower of different plant or of same plant we call it as cross pollination cross pollination between two different flowers of same plant or different plants of same type same genus same family so this is called as cross pollination but when if a flower is having both male and female reproductive parts if the pollen grains of the flower pollinates the same female reproductive part of the same flower you call it as self pollination this is called as self pollination so these are the two different types of pollination so what is pollination the transfer of pollen grain from the anther to the stigma of the same flower or another flower of the same plant or other flower of the other plant so this transfer is called as pollination which is a very important process in the uh, fertilization in the sexual reproduction in plants so this pollination is carried out by various agents like air mostly by insects so now let us see let us see the various smaller parts that are present inside this pollen grain and inside this ovary inside the ovule how the fertilization takes place and what are the various cells found in the ovule so the male reproductive system organs of a plant consist of a stamen anther and pollen grains so the pollen grains are fine dust like particles which which uh, we can observe under a microscope using a microscope you can take the dust the pollen dust of a plant like a hibiscus uh, you can put that yellow color powder like substance which is found on the anthers of the uh, flowers like hibiscus into the water of the slide and you can observe it under a microscope you will be able to see the structures like small balls with some hairs and if a pollen grain is germinated you can find it like this having an extension tube like this these kind of pollen grains can be observed so now let us see what happens to the pollen grain once it reaches the female reproductive system so we know that the female reproductive system or the gynoecium of a plant it consists of a stigma and a style and ovary what does the ovary consist of ovary consists of ovules some plants some flowers may have only one ovule some may have 2 3 10 some cases hundreds of ovules depending upon the species of the plant the number of ovules can be 1 to hundreds so the ovule is attached to the ovary what is there in the ovule so inside the ovule there are so many layers and at the center of the ovule you can find a small microscopic embryo sac this embryo sac it consists of food and water that is stored and it contains gametophytic cells it contains cells the reproductive cells are found in this central embryo sac 
so there are in many of the plants most of the plants there are seven cells the cells are seven in number so among those seven cells we can see the structure and large structure here there are seven cells in the embryo sac out of this the most important one is the egg cell the first important cell is egg cell and the second one is polar nuclei so here inside we find seven cells but eight nuclei eight nuclei seven cells eight nuclei because this cell has got two nuclei this polar nuclei has got two nuclei the rest of the cells these are called as antipodals antipodals and these two cells are called as synergids these are the supporting cells synergids here is the egg cell which is to be fertilized or fused so now whenever the pollen grain it reaches the stigma either by insect or by the wind however the pollination takes place so the pollen grains it comes here and here is a sugary substance that is attract the insects so when the pollination takes place and after the pollen grain comes here the pollen grains germinate that means the pollen grain it pro produces a long tube so this tube it passes down through the style and it enters the ovule the tube enters the ovule till the embryo sac till here the tube comes so what is this tube for the end of the tube it ruptures and it opens here it opens the door for the entry of something what is that something what enters into the embryo so here the pollen grain the mature pollen grain it consists of two sperm cells of two male cells gametes or we call as more two sperm cells these two sperms they travel along the tube to enter into this embryo sac so the first sperm cell it fuses with the egg cell fertilization takes place then what about the second one the second sperm cell it fuses with the polar nuclei it fuses with the polar nuclei so in plants we observe double fertilization double fertilization one fertilization with the egg cell the second one with the polar nuclei so when the first sperm cell fuses with the egg cell it develops into a zygote which will develop into an embryonic plant and after the, the second fertilization with the polar nuclei here the endospermic tissue is formed endosperm is formed by the process of mitosis here the mitotic division is initiated the size of ovule increases the size of the ovule increases by the mitosis and the endosperm tissue is grown here so here the zygote it will get either one or two cotyledons So, in case of a dicotyledon plant, hypocotyledon plant, or epicotyledon plant, dicot or monocot plant, in case of a dicot plant, it will get two cotyledons. If it is a monocot plant, it will get one cotyledon. So, in case of dicot plants, the embryo it will get two cotyledons. So, these two cotyledons they absorb the food which is stored in the endosperm. So, the endosperm it contains the food and the zygote it will have a rod like structure to which the cotyledons are attached two cotyledons in case of a dicot one cotyledon in case of a monocot so these zygote these cotyledons they absorb the food from the endosperm they absorb and they degenerate the endosperm in cases like beans a dicotyledonous plants so these cotyledons they grow in size as the zygote it is uh, developing and the ovule changes into a seed so the ovule changes into a seed the cotyledons take up all the food from the endosperm in some cases the endosperm is uh, completely uh, disintegrated because the food and everything is taken by the cotyledons as the cotyledons they have to supply the food to that embryo to grow to germinate into a new plant so in some cases like in corn in corn if we observe that uh, the endosperm is not degenerated it is also growing along with the formation of the seed so as the embryo is forming that seed uh, that the zygote and uh, everything is forming the seed along with the seed formation the endospermic tissue is also grown and it is absorbed in corn whereas in case of beans in case of these dicot plants the cotyledons they take up the 
food completely from the endosperm and makes it completely regenerated or disappear. So here we have seen what changes takes place after fertilization. After fertilization, the ovule, the ovule it turns into a seed. The ovule turns into a seed. The zygote develops into embryo. So the total ovule it turn, turns into a seed. And whereas that the ovary of the flower it becomes fruit. So the ovary becomes fruit. Other parts like the sepals, petals, style, stigma, everything they fall off. They get wrinkled and fall off and the ovary turns into the fruit, ovules turn into the seeds. Now the reproductive units of flowering plants are ready, those are the seeds. They grow into new plants when they are germinated. The germination of these seeds takes place in proper conditions. They require certain things like air, water, temperature. So when all these favorable conditions are there and when these seeds are kept in the soil, they start germinating. Now let us see how the seeds germinate. Now let us see that uh, seed germination, seed germination. So how this seed germination takes place? We can see the seed germination experiments we have conducted in your lower classes. Germination of seeds, taking some Bengal gram, soaking them for half a day, some three to four hours and after that tying them in a wet cloth and keeping in a damp place. So. After the next day, you can find certain sprouts, white color roots coming out of the seeds. So the seeds, they germinate when necessary moisture, necessary temperature is provided to them. So when the seeds are uh, sown in the soil, most of the seeds, they have a tough seed coat. So first, for to make the sprout, to make the root or stem coming out of the seed, to let the embryo to produce a baby root and a baby shoot, first the seed coat has to be broken. When we keep the uh, seeds in water, the seed coat it absorbs the water and it becomes soft. Earlier it was tough. So the soft seed coat it ruptures and the baby root comes out of it and the baby shoot it comes out of it. So as the plant is growing up, the cotyledons they drop they disintegrate, they disappear and it grows up into a young plant. So this is how sexual reproduction takes place in plants.